Good evening, everybody. We're waiting around for a few more people to sign in and to log in. So we'll be starting in about two minutes. In the meantime, I'm glad that you're here. We're going to be talking about, obviously, about Santa Barbara's Japantown, a topic that I, I know very few people who know much about it at all. And so we're really fortunate this evening to be able to show you this film. So again, um, thanks for coming. And um, this is the final film for the Asian American Film Series for this year. And we'll get started in a few minutes. If you don't know where your chat box is on Zoom, uh, you might wanna look for that right now. It's at the bottom of the screen. If you move your cursor down to the bottom, you should be able to find the, the uh, little icon that says chat. You'll be using that later on to log into the film. It's gonna be a Vimeo link. Um, we had some problems the first week, but I think uh, Kevin's tested it multiple times this week and we shouldn't have any problems. But if you do encounter any problems, please let us know and we'll help you get started with that as well. There, uh, we always wanna encourage people to keep in mind the upcoming events that are happening at the Santa Barbara Trust for Historic Preservations. Um, the Santa Barbara Trust for Historic Preservation, most people associate with just the Presidio, the state park, the location itself, but it's much more than that. Um, in, in addition to um, the museum and the exhibits there, we have events throughout the year. A lot of them, as you know, in the past year have been online events and many of those have been recorded. So if you have missed something or just kind of curious about Santa Barbara history or about, you know, uh, you just have some time and are interested in history, you can look at those, including some of the events that the Asian American Affinity Group did in May for uh, AAPI Heritage Months and they're still there. Um, they also have a YouTube channel that you can check out. All right, Paul, this is Kevin here. Welcome, everyone. Um, I think we can get started. We have we have 120 people already joined us tonight. Thank Yay. you so much for joining us. Yeah, thank you for joining us. And this evening, as you know, is the third and final film of the 12th annual Asian American Film Series. If this is your first time joining us, I want to just offer you a special welcome and to let you know that this is only one of events that we do and this is something that's going to continue. So everybody should know that we'll be back next July with new films and with the people who made them. So remember that and all the events, check out the events throughout the year. Our goal is to celebrate the rich history and heritage of the Asian American community here in Santa Barbara and beyond. Tonight, we're honored to present the world premiere of Sonzai, and later on, we'll be joined by the filmmakers. This year's Asian American Film Series has been made possible by a grant from the George H. Griffiths and Olive J. Griffiths Charitable Foundation, who have been so generous in supporting so many of our events here at the Santa Barbara Trust for Historic Preservation. In a few minutes, as I perhaps already mentioned, after this introduction, we'll be providing you with a Vimeo link in the chat box in Zoom. After, um, after you view the film, please return to the same Zoom link for a Q&A session with our special guest. Tonight, as you know, we're featuring Sonzai, a film by Barry Fong and researcher Koji Lao Ozawa, which tells the story of literally the buried history of Santa Barbara's very own Japantown, or Nihon Machi. We're so lucky to have them with us. So again, please stick around after the film. I'm Paul Mori. I'm a committee member of the Santa Barbara Trust for Historic Preservation's Asian Americans Affinity Group. This group is made up of local AAPI community members who volunteer their time to help plan and organize events like our annual Summer Asian American Film Series, our Fall Asian American Neighborhood Festival, as well as various events during the year. If you missed our three online events celebrating AAPI Heritage Month this past May, you still can visit, you still can view them online at the Santa Barbara Trust for Historic Preservation's website. Look under lectures and you'll find it there. We'll also be providing that link later on in the program. In addition to those, you'll find some other lectures that are, are um, that have been held over the year. 
I am sorry to announce that this evening our committee is mourning the loss of Kay Van Horn. She was our longest serving member. She was actually a founding member of everything that the Asian American Committee has been doing. And she was a volunteer for over 30 years. She started those, those organizations like uh, that would become the Asian American Affinity Group and our Neighborhood Festival. Her dedication to preserving the history of the Japanese community in Santa Barbara is so admired and I hope never forgotten. If you haven't visited the Nihon Machi Revisited exhibit at the Presidio, I really encourage you to do that. There you will see not only the history, but the history that mattered so much to Kay and so much of her lives in that exhibit. Well, but fortunately for you, Kay, some of Kay's stories have been recorded and you'll see some of them this evening in Son's Eye. She and others will tell you about the life of the Santa Barbara community of Japanese. Um, some of you also might know Roki Fukumura, who is in the audience this evening, I hope, and, uh, and you will see him. You might know him from Tri-County Produce. If you don't know anything about Santa Barbara, Japan town, you're not alone. Plenty of us, few of us actually know anything about it. And Sonsai will hopefully give you a better idea of what that was. But before the Japanese lived in this area around the Presidio and the Chinese, before them was the Mexican and the Spanish. But there were the original inhabitants, the Chumash. And we at the Santa Barbara Trust for Historic Preservation would like to take a moment to honor these ancestral grounds that we all are collectively gathered upon and support the resilience that all indigenous peoples have shown worldwide. We are in the traditional territory of the Chumash peoples. Okay, I think we're ready. The film runs about 33 minutes. So at the film's conclusion, again, rejoin the Zoom session and you'll meet Koji and Barry. And they'll tell you more about this bit of hidden Santa Barbara history. So right now, check your chat box. And if you have any problems, like I mentioned before, Kevin and I will be here to help you out. So enjoy the film and we'll see you at 645. Okay, everyone, I want to welcome everyone back. This is Kevin from the Trust. I'm behind the scenes here doing the, the tech work. Um, I put this in the chat. A lot of people had, had trouble with the volume. Vimeo is a little different than YouTube where the volume control is. So you can always go back after this, uh, this uh, Q&A session, this conversation with the filmmakers and try to watch the film again without the pressure of doing it under time constraints. So uh, the link should be live. Um, maybe they'll keep it up for the rest of the week and I'll let them decide and let you know. But um, you can try revisiting and rewatching the film if you had trouble. It's not, it's not, um, it's more important that you get to hear from the filmmakers now. So I'm going to let Paul take it away. Um, again, if you had any issues, you can email me, kevin at sbthb.org. I'll put it in the chat. Um, if you need some help, um, I can help you tonight. But um, otherwise, just try again later. Well, welcome back, and here's your chance to learn more about the film and Santa Barbara's Nihon Machi. I'm sure you have questions, and you have the opportunity to hear directly from the makers of the film. Um, I've been reading the chats. Thanks for your comments so more uh, already, and um, if you have some questions, you can put them in the chat box at any time, and we'll try our best to get to them. It's my great honor to introduce the filmmakers, Koji Laozawa and Barry Fong. Koji Laozao is a Stanford University researcher and historical archaeologist, which combines various disciplines and methods to form holistic conclusions. After seeing this film, you have a sense of what I just said um, and something of his expertise. In addition to his archaeological research here in Santa Barbara, he has also done related research at the former Gila River internment camp where most of Santa Barbara County and Ventura County residents were forcibly removed during World War II. Many of you already know Koji for his really good lecture last year on this research in the Gila River. Unfortunately, that's not available uh, on a recording because of copyright issues, but um, he, stay in tune. Maybe we'll invite him back and have him talk again about this topic. Director Barry Fong is a fourth-generation Chinese-American and San Francisco native. 
He has served as the president of the board of directors for the Chinese Historical Society of America and leads a consulting group that champions diversity, equity, and inclusion in nonprofit organizations. He has produced and directed short films about Asian American experience since 2013. And his film, Finding the Virgo, is now nationally available on public television. And we'll tell you how to see more of his films in a little bit as well. Thank you. Um, Koji and, and Barry for joining us. And thank you more than anything for letting us premiere this film. Um, let's just start with a, there was a question in the a chat. They were kind of confused about the title. So can you tell us a little bit about what Sonzai means and how you arrived as your choice of a title of this film? Thank you, uh, thank you, Paul, for having us and to everybody who's attending um, tonight. And uh, I'll, I'll say first that um, I think it was Barry who uh, first suggested the title of Sonzai. So for those oh. of you who um, can't read uh, uh, the kanji, the characters that are up on the screen before the title came or don't know Japanese, Sonzai in Japanese means existence. And uh, we, we talked about what the title of this film as we were making it. And we like the theme of existence as the archaeology. And we hope this project helps to tell the existence of a community um, that without sort of uh, um, knowledge of where to look, you, you might miss when you're coming to Santa Barbara. And we want to make sure that existence isn't forgotten. Why Santa Barbara? Um, you know, I mean, there's a lot of uh, former Japan towns, and and does this have any connection with your Gila River uh, research? Yeah, so um, I uh, have been researching primarily the archaeology of Gila River, um, where my grandparents were incarcerated during World War II, and I started that that research in 2013, and it wasn't until uh, much more recently, in 2019, after um, speaking with a colleague, Stacy Camp, who was in the field, uh, in the film, and then meeting Mike and Wally, um, the great archaeologist at the Santa Barbara Trust, who was also featured, um, that we began looking at connections between Santa Barbara's Japantown, Nihonmachi, and Gila River. And it turns out almost all of the people from Santa Barbara um, Japanese American descent were incarcerated at Hilo, with a few exceptions, um, like Roki. But uh, um, most, by far, from Santa Barbara County actually went to Hilo. Mm -hmm. This is a question for both of you. How did this film happen, and why did you decide to make it? I'll start. Um, so I've been lucky enough to work with Koji in uh, in China on another archaeology project, archaeological project. And we made a film about that. Uh, it's actually available on uh, Stanford's website about the Chinese rail railroad workers. Um, and, and so I think, you know, Koji was doing this great research and he, he came to me and said, there's an opportunity to record what we're doing down here. And I was able to pop down there for a couple of days the first time and, and record some interviews and record some of the work in the lab. It would be great if you would give that information so our viewers might have a chance to look that up and find it. So maybe when you have a second, write it down in the chat or, or give us directions and maybe we can get that information to everybody. Will do. Uh, Barry, what's your connection with Japan towns? Is there any connection between Japan towns in California and the Chinese, um, the Chinatowns in California? Yeah, so I am, uh, you know, uh, just ended up from a, a Chinese immigrant family. And, um, and I think the histories between the Chinese and Japanese in, in America has a lot of parallels. And so I am most interested uh, in terms of filmmaking in, uh, in erased and ignored history. And I think a lot of Chinatowns were erased and I think a lot of mm -hmm. Japan towns were erased in this country. So um, that's been my, my area of interest. Koji, let's, let's talk a little bit about Kay. I mean, we're all kind of sad that Kay is gone now. And I'm sure every, a lot of people who knew her personally have mixed feelings seeing this, this film this evening. Can you talk a little about the interview process and your relationship and talking to her and interviewing her? 
Yeah, so I first met Kay when I came down um, to give a talk at the Santa Barbara Trust in, in January of 2019. Um, and we had spoken via email before then. And she was just uh, so helpful and generous with her time and with introducing me to many of the Japanese American community, many members of the Japanese American community um, and the Nihonmachi community in Santa Barbara. She, um, she took Barry and I out to lunch when we came down to, to do the interviews and she introduced us to people and she was just such a, a force to be reckoned with. And it wow. was, it was just such a pleasure to work with her and heartbreaking this year to, to lose her. And we should mention Roki, right? Just because he's kind of a fixture in Santa Barbara and anybody who goes to Tri-County Produce may see him there even through the COVID pandemic, he was working there unbelievably, but he was there. Did you want to say anything about Roki? Yeah, talk about another force to be reckoned with. Uh, Roki was just, um, for those of you who don't know, as, as Paul mentioned, um, I, won't, I won't tell Roki's age on, on air, but uh, he, he was obviously um, in Santa Barbara before the war at camp and working to this day. And his stories and um, his generosity with sharing with us really helped put together a lot of this film. And so we were, we were so lucky to have him. And, and um, I spoke to him earlier today and I think he's watching. So um, hi, Roki. And uh, you know, it was really just a pleasure to, to interview for this process. Coach, you can you also say, oh, go ahead. Oh, just sorry. I just wanted to chime in and say we can all only wish that we will have the recollection that Roki has at, yeah. at his age. It's unbelievable. His perspective is unbelievable uh, on life and his experiences. Uh, so we are very, very lucky to get to talk to him. Hi, Roki. And John Dixon, who's uh, the owner of uh, Tri County Produce, has joined us tonight. So um, he knows him well as. Koji, tell us about, in terms of archaeology, is Santa Barbara different? And also, kind of related to that, how is Santa Barbara's Japan town unique or different from maybe the larger metropolitan uh, Japan towns that people are more familiar with, like Little Tokyo and Los Angeles? Yeah, so as, as people might know, there are only three historic Japan towns that still exist in California that, that you can go to today. There's two in the Bay Area, San Jose and San Francisco, and, and one in LA. And a lot of research and history done on um, Asian American communities, and in particular Japanese American communities, has been centered around these um, major metropolitan Japan towns or in rural areas. So there have been archeological digs in some smaller towns and rural areas, but there's been almost no research done at these um, cosmopolitan areas like Santa Barbara that were, were smaller towns, but still fairly urban um, and had lots of different connections. And so um, the archeological collection here at Nihonmachi is actually one of the first um, and I, I saw Doug Ross is on the, the call and he's an archeologist and he can check me in my email if I'm wrong about this, but it was one of the first actually um, excavated sites of a Japan town in the United States. So the excavations that happened in the 60s and 70s um, and the artifacts that were came out of that were, were some of the first Asian American and, and certainly one of the first Japanese American archeological collections um, to ever be excavated. And so it really has a historic importance for that. And the population I think is really, really interesting. Um, we've been, I've been working with a lot of different specialists. I had just gotten some information um, from a faunal expert, Ryan Kennedy, who's been looking at remains from uh, um, the trash pits in Nihonmachi to learn more about the diet, what people were eating. We're seeing some surprising things like a lot of sheep and goat and, and beef cuts in the, the um, and rabbits in the food, as well as different types of fish. But these are things that, again, um, we just don't have a good uh, amount of documentary evidence. What is, what are people eating every day? 
Um, what are people eating off of? And this collection and this space and, and the way in which it's preserved by its presence on the former site of the Presidio is mm -hmm. unique and a valuable window to that period and to this population. Can you tell us about what you hope to still find out about Santa Barbara's Japantown? I'm sure people are just kind of hungry to know more about it because there's so few pictures and so little evidence that it ever existed in Santa Barbara. Yeah, so we're the the research is ongoing. So I am uh, I'm I've been looking at some of these materials um, that were excavated in 2009 and some that were excavated in in the 1970s. And my colleague Stacy Camp has also been working on this material. But there's more material that we're hoping to expand our analysis of, mm -hmm. and um, looking at both the um, those types of objects that we see in the film, but I think it's remarkable. There are things like medicine bottles in the collection um, that were available both in Santa Barbara, but I found, um, for instance, archival records showing that the same medicines are being purchased in Brazil, in wow. Japan, in Korea, all across the Japanese diaspora. But then there are also medicines from State Street Pharmacy, um, so right next door. Uh, wow. Do you also look at old maps and and other kinds of evidence, business records, phone directories, those kinds of things as well as you're trying to piece together what existed in Santa Barbara? Yeah, I've been looking at, uh, in addition to the archaeology and these oral histories, um, the historic Sanborn insurance maps, um, both uh, newspaper directories from Santa Barbara, but also from the Rafu Shimpo. Um, which is a Los Angeles-based newspaper that had directories. Um, for instance, in 1940, um, the Rafu um directory shows that there, in that one block, there are at least 25 to 40 um, people living there on that one half of that one block, in addition to two grocery stores, a barber shop, mm -hmm. um, the churches, uh, Young Men and Women's Buddhist Association, three uh, Japanese associations, all sorts of schools, an employment office. I mean, you know, a really packed amount that we can see through, through these directories. Tonight was the premiere. And I, I know creative people are always kind of never feeling finished with a project. Is, this, is there a future for Sonzai? What's gonna to happen to this film? Uh, do you have any plans to expand it? Or do you have any plans to get a greater release on this or broader release of the film? Uh, we just, uh, both of you, just talk about what, what your dreams and plans are for Sonzai. I'll let Barry go first. Okay, so um, uh, yeah, I def that's a great question, and I, and, uh, I definitely see this as an unfinished work. You know, it's clear we had to do some interviews via Zoom. Uh, there were you know dozens and dozens of families here, and we have only a few interviews, and we'd love to hear more from more people. Um, I'm particularly interested in the life before incarceration, and uh, I think there was this, this fruitful, peaceful life here, and uh, incarceration really interrupted that in so many ways, social, uh, family, uh, financial, economic. Uh, so I'm interested in that. Uh, so we will continue to work on the film as Koji continues to do research, and we uh, hopefully are, we'll be able to get down there live into, in Santa Barbara and, do, and uh, reshoot some of these interviews. So there's a question here. I, it's hard for me to follow all the questions, but there was a a uh, question of what years did this community exist? Kochi, yeah. why don't you take that one? So the first, um, the really first Japanese um, coming into Santa Barbara arrived at pretty much the turn of the century, 1900. But on Canon Perdido, we see a series of boarding houses open up in 1906 and 1907. Wow, and then early. take off. Um, in the 1920s, it really starts to hit its larger critical mass in the 1920s, up until basically 1942 with the incarceration. In the years after the war, um, some families return. Uh, we've had some stories that uh, we weren't able to, to put into this film, but we hope to include in, the, in, in our next iteration of Sanzai about how people returned after the war, um, briefly stayed in the churches, some 
kept uh, valuable possessions um, that that they had to come back and and get before they moved somewhere else. But really, the 1950s we see the community begin to disperse and and never recover from that incarceration. Yeah, there's a lot of stories still to be told, I'm sure, and and we're always limited by time, including this Q and A. But I want to give Barry a chance to tell us about what's in the works for you. What projects are you working on? And um, also tell us about your Vimeo showcase link where people can see some of the films that you've created. Sure. Uh, so as you mentioned earlier, uh, the film I made in 2019 called Finding the Virgo is now on public television. So if you're, uh, you don't want to see it, you'd like to see it in your community, call your public TV station. It's available to them. They can play it anytime at, at no charge. Um, I'm working, that film happens to be about a uh, Vietnamese boat refugee who, uh, whose family made it to California and she spent, the daughter spent most of her adult life looking for the captain and the crew of the ship that uh, saved them. The ship was called the Virgo. I'm getting um, you goosebumps. Can at, <laughs> you can look at findingthevirgo.com if you want to see a trailer. And um, the, that's available also for purchase, I believe, on your Vimeo showcase. Is that correct? correct. Yes, correct. And the, uh, the showcase also has a collection of films I've been doing over the past almost 10 years, I guess, um, about uh, San Francisco Chinatown, Angel Island, various characters and personalities uh, in the Asian uh, American community. If and I'm memory... also working on it. A... Go, Go ahead, Paul. Um, if memory serves, didn't Finding the Virgo win an award or had some recognition yeah. for its yeah, Tell I think our, our uh, so in 2019, before they shut before the pandemic, we traveled all over the world actually screening the film. And I think our most notable award was the Cannes Fest, which is the biggest Asian American film festival in the country, in the world, uh, here in San Francisco. So we won the Audience Choice Award wow. against some really high budget, <laughs> high big name films. Uh, so we're very, very proud of that. People who make documentaries never have enough money, do they? Correct. If anyone's out there with a checkbook, um, you know, we're open. Our arms um, are open. And, and um, I want to mention that this film, The Sunset That Everyone Saw This Evening, was sponsored by UCLA's Asian American Studies Center and the Aritani Care Award. And is that related to Aritani Theater down in Los Angeles? I, I assume that's the same family, but I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, so the, the um, Eritani Care Award is from George and Sake Eritani and through UCLA. And I believe George Eritani is actually from Santa Barbara County. Um, wow. And uh, was in, uh, I want to say, Guadalupe before the war. Um, but they're a, a huge contributor and um, were really instrumental to uh, supporting this film and getting it up off the ground. I'm sure people want to know more about Santa Barbara's Japantown. Do you have any advice for them? I uh, compiled a short list of some online sources, but they're, they're, you know, they're minimal. And hopefully Kevin's going to be able to get that to everybody. Um, and Kevin, if, if after, after we get the answer here, are there any questions that I've missed here that I need to ask? Uh, I'll, I'll look through the questions for you, Paul. I just put, put the, in the chat your, um, your Google document. It should be accessible by everyone um, for some links uh, for people to look more into Japanese American history. Um, but I think you, you did a good job of, of surveying the questions, but I'll take a look for you. So Koji Wano. Yeah, so this is, um, this is part of what inspires Barry I to work is that there's so little information out about Santa Barbara Japantown. You know, there are a few doctoral dissertations and projects that have discussed it. There are archives, um, both locally in Santa Barbara, um, but also at UCLA that people can look at. But it's really frustrating that there's not more information. Of course, the Nihon Machi exhibit at the Presidio Trust, which I, um, I think is open now. The Presidio has reopened. In the yes, it is month, open. Um, yeah. Is a great place to start looking at these resources and seeing some more of the artifacts and history and photographs from the community. And, you know, I hope that um, this is just the first step in expanding um, that knowledge and producing more information for people to find out about this historic event. 
Fantastic. Are there any final thoughts that Barry you want to share? Oh yeah. So I, I noticed that there were some people that had trouble with the volume. Um, I'll look at that, but um, I will leave the link up for the next two weeks. Um, oh, so fantastic. your audience is free to go back and watch it and try to adjust their volume on the computer. It seems like most people had were able to do it. So uh, I don't think it's a problem with the file. I want to acknowledge again our film series sponsor, the George H. Griffith and Olive J. Griffiths Foundation for their generous support of the Asian American film series. I also want to, you're only seeing me this evening, but behind me is a whole committee, this Asian American affinity group that I've mentioned, and they're all wonderful people, um, and they all volunteer their time, and um, I want to acknowledge them as well. You have seen several of them on the previous two weeks films, but uh, we're, we're working in the background. We're going to continue to bring you programs, so keep us in mind, and um, I think that's it. And so we're at the end of July, and the this concludes our 12th annual Asian American Film Series at the Santa Barbara Trust for Historic Preservation. Oh, and I've got to thank Kevin McGarry for all his help this evening. I couldn't have done this without him. And um, anyways, look for us uh, next July when we'll bring you more great films and, and keep looking at the website for stuff that, that we're gonna be doing throughout the year. So again, thanks for watching and thank you, Koji. And thank you, Barry. We're so delighted that we're able to show your film and thank you for your time and answering our questions. So thank you very much. And that's the end of the session. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, everybody.